Hello and welcome to another little video. Um, making this time it's going to be about a CW or Morse to the uninitiated um, audio filter. Now I have put an audio filter in my direct conversion receiver, but it's only a low pass filter. So um, any signal that is below around about 800 hertz, it will pick up. Um, which is fine most of the time. Um, CW is going to be around, I prefer around six to 700 hertz. But if there's somebody who's really quite a bit lower than that, yet off frequency, you'll hear them as well. So it's not great. So I was looking for a peak audio filter. And I came across this website, uh, the QRP Club of New England. And they've got a little project called Nescaf. Okay, and Nescaf, I believe it's not coffee, I think it stands for the New England Switch Capacitor Audio Filter. So, the I'm not going to take any um, credit for this design, really. I've modified it slightly, and I'll show you how. Um, so, New England QRP Club, New England QRP dot org forward slash Nescaf forward slash, okay? Um, and as you can see, they are saying, <coughs> currently out of stock. And look that they want for shipping to the UK. $15. All right, that's more than the cost of the kit. It's not their fault, I grant them, but that seems like a rather excessive amount of money, and I wasn't going to pay it anyway. Uh, no, I'm not going to pay for something that costs more to ship than it does to build. Okay, please be aware that Nescaf's kits are currently out of stock, but they have been very kind in actually publishing the design. And here it is. Now, this is not the best of diagrams here. I printed it out, and I think there's a bigger one somewhere as well. Anyway, but it's based around this SCAF10, which is a um, switch capacitor filter. And I found a supply of those. You can get them on eBay. <clears throat> um, you can get them at uh, better, uh, shall we say, electronic component manufacturers. Um, and you can also get them from... AliExpress and places like that, but you have to buy about 10 of them. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm, I'm not, I won't be honest and say, I'll be honest and say I can't really work out how this does it, but it's in the chip. I, I've got the data sheet. Uh, several of these chips will work with it. Um, there's different numbers as well, and I'll look those up for you in a moment. Um, anyway, um, this is just a 555. Um, which is running at a hundred times the peak frequency of the audio filter. So I like mine around about 650 hertz, as I said. So this one is running on mine at 65 kilohertz. All right. Um, the only important thing here is this capacitor, C6 on here, needs to be um, I'd call it C0G or uh, NP0, whichever. Um, you know the ones that ain't so temperature sensitive, for it. So they, so they is a bit more stable. You don't want this drifting too much. All right, it's gonna drift, but you only want it drifting by a few hertz rather than kilohertz. Otherwise, it'll knock your filter all a kilda. That was good. It rhymed. Right. Um, this is your bog standard LM386. But what I will say is I've made some changes to what they've done here. All right, this is set according to the um, data sheet for the LM386. It is set for the base boost configuration. Yeah, I don't know why. We're not looking at base. We want about 650 hertz. So I've changed that on mine. Uh, and this is just the uh, power regulator because you need a nice stable power supply for this. Okay, um, it's set as a 7809, I think that is on there. It's not very easy to see. Um, anyway, so don't worry too much about that. I've got a better one. 
All right, let me just find out the other types of um, chip that will work with this. Okay, so here's a different website, and in truth, I found this one first. This one is SCAF Audio Filter, um, and it's based on the New England QRP Club's NESCAF filter, as he says here. <clears throat> it works with pretty much any rig. If you take the uh, audio out of the uh, like the headphone socket or somewhere um, and plug it into this and put a little speaker on in, you can use it with any any rig. Uh, it's based on the MF10, which is the one that the NESCAF filter uses, okay? The granddaddy of the family, don't you know? Right, uh, more modern version exists, okay? Um, the LMF100 and the LTC1060. Now, they are more expensive, as far as I can tell, although, they're, like I said, they're pin compatible, and I, although it says it's got better performance, of course, I can't really work that out. I only bought the one, and I bought the MF10. Um, and I think it was this one, don't quote me on this, but I think it was the LTC is surface mount only. It, and there might be a pin through version available, but I didn't find it. Okay, so here's a bit of information if you're keen on knowing what these things they have. Each of these chips has two second order filter stages. So what they've done, go back to the schematic, one of them is configured as a low pass. I just randomly chose that one I don't know whether it is and the other one is configured as a high pass and they are both adjustable with this dual gang pot um, which you put on the front so what happens there is as you can see he's put the pots here I can't see which one of them whether we've done them individually I did it with a dual gang pot, but you could use a high and a low cut if you wanted. It just seems to me like a little bit more work. Yeah, bandwidth. No, it's just the middle one. Okay. And he's made his frequency tunable as well. I can't really see an awful lot of point in that myself. I want my morphs to be at the same frequency all the time. Mm, well, whatever. Whatever switches you are. There we go. So, what he's done is made this out on the front panel as well but in mine I've put both of these as presets inside the the, uh, the board okay back to this one um, okay so 555 timer on these cases put 70 kilohertz and you get a 700 hertz center frequency all right now he's done his here with the kit Oh, hang on. No, he hasn't. He's made the board. That seemed like a lot of faff to me. So what I did is that I have made my had my own board done with Easy EDA. If you haven't come across ED, Easy EDA, it's a brilliant free bit of schematic and <clears throat> PCB layout software. And it hooks into a company called uh, JLC PCB, and they will make the PCBs for you for not many pennies, really. Uh, the postage you get is a little bit more than the cost of the, the boards, but not a lot. So, uh, um, it, and you, but you have to buy five. <laughs> right. So I had five of these done. So here's the uh, this is MF10 CCN. That's the uh, the chip that I've got. I bought that on uh, eBay, about, about a fiver, but uh, you can get them uh, cheaper than that, like I say, uh, if you pay a bit more. Um, here's my 555. Um, so these are the two that you set to the frequency that you want. So what I did is that on the board, I built this bit and the power regulator first, which drives it, okay, and set this up with a frequency counter so that the output here is running at... 100 times the side tone frequency that you want so 65 kilohertz in my case all right you could put that on the front panel if you wanted but i didn't now the lm386 um which drives the speakers which go on the end here um i've changed the uh, the gain here right now in my direct conversion receiver 
uh, it, I have already got an LM386 and then the game is set to 50. So what I've done is change these components to set to 50. All right, and it does make it a little less hissy like that. So I've got a little bit more output coming out of my mixer and I don't need to drive the uh, the LM386 too hard, which it will do um, a gain of 200, but it uh, starts to get a bit distorted and a little bit um, hissy at those kind of levels. So, but at, at 50, it's a perfectly acceptable audio, especially for CW. All right, now, the things that I changed here, I took the, this is the bandwidth, all right, pot, um, I've got A and B, so that's on a dual gang pot. What I've also done is bought a dual gang pot with a switch on it, so I can completely bypass the MF10, so that it goes straight into the, excuse me, 386. All right, um, and that's the uh, the wiper of those two. Then we come out to the audio volume pot nothing special about that 10k log something like that all right and here's my supply in speakers out audio in any questions good right i think that will do now i will show you what i ended up with so here's the board um this is the board that i got back from um jl see PCB and you can see double sided all through hole quite nice not a lot of money really um, about I think that came to including the postage was about eight quid or something all right and there it is populated um, here's the uh, MF10 here's the uh, 386 and there's the 555 the two little pots here are for the uh, the frequency at 65 kilohertz I described you'll notice that I've used uh, tantalum capacitors wherever it's on the signal path and the rest of them um, the little COG one is in there and then anything that's sort of timing or that critical I use mylar or something like that and all the rest of the power supply ones are just um, Electrolytics. All right, you can probably hear that. This is the uh, <laughs> little speaker here. All right, and um, this is the volume control just lashed up on the bench. Okay, and that's running at 650 hertz. I'll leave it about there. I think you'll probably still be able to hear it. All right. Okay, this is the bandwidth uh, pot. I haven't put the bandpass switch on it. Um, at all at the moment, but what I'm going to do is just change the the frequency. It's on its finest setting at the moment, so you'll be able to hear how um, what, what the peaks like. So that's 650 hertz. It diminishes quite quickly, doesn't it? There's the peak, and by that's about 1k or so barely hear it but if you open out the frequency bandwidth quite nice close it down you won't be able to hear that gone cool so what i'll do next is um i'll hook it up to um the receiver and show you what it sounds like uh, in use on the bench probably um, and then I'll put it in my, um, my little receiver and we'll see how we go from there. So um, that's a kind of a practical lash up <laughs> classic. I'll stick it on the bench and see if it works. Look, so it proved that it works and I got the, uh, the PCB correct, which was nice. Okay, here's lashed up to the little DC receiver. Filter's wide open at the moment. Turn it down. Filter's wide open at the moment, and I've got it tuned into this guy, German, <laughs> desperate for somebody to talk to, and hoping you can hear all the other signals in there.
Nice. That sounds about the peak. Not surprised there's sort of hissing and all sorts in the background there because it's all on the bench. You can hear that guy on it. Let's see if we can zoom in on him. Probably the same guy. <laughs> If you're wondering why the S meter's not working, <laughs> the S meter actually takes her from the audio from um, the volume pot, um, and of course I'm not. It's not connected at the moment. The volume pot's out here on the bench. It's normally the one that's in here, you see. So that needs to be wired in. So that's why the S meter is not working. So that probably go wide enough if you wanted to listen to SSB. Um, obviously I'm not that interested in SSB so it's not really a problem for me incidentally um, this receiver let me turn him off um, this little receiver is my own design it's cobbled together from lots of different um, things and this is not the first thing I've changed um, I've also changed um, one of the mixers um, no, preamplifier I've put a uh, bu -bu 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 what's it called um, I AGC circuit in there which now works very well um, so what I thought I would do for anybody who's interested um, I'll do a talk through or a walk through on this uh, receiver um, I probably won't include all the circuit diagrams unless somebody specifically wants them um, it's not a kit or anything like that it's completely homebrew um, it's direct conversion and it is um, it's driven by a DDS chip and an Arduino, which is how come I get the frequency and everything on the screen. Um, and it seems to work very well for a first first bash. Okay, I'm now going to see if I can dismantle it and fit that board in there. It's a little bit bigger than the one that's got to come out, so I'm gonna, I have to have a little bit of a, a faff there to get that in, but uh, I'm sure I'll manage. Things are a bit cramped in there now. You can't really see it from there. Okay, thanks for watching. If you like it, please do give a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to see any more of my videos that I put up, they're not very often, but when I build something, I like to make a video for uh, posterity. Um, so uh, if you've got any questions on this, um, this board, this CW audio filter board, um, drop me a line. I'm more than happy to answer any questions on it if I can. Um, uh, if you want a board, also drop me a line. I'm, I might be able to do some. If enough people say they want one, obviously I've got five, but... Um, I've got the, the design now and I won't charge you $15 for, uh, for the uh, privilege of sending it to you either, especially if you're in the UK. Alrighty, thanks very much for watching and catch you later on the next one.